Welcome back to another edition of the Rams Roundup here just outside the Rose Hill Gym, focusing on Fordham women's basketball, and joined now by the head coach of the program, Stephanie Gately. Coach, how's the day going? It's a great day, Drew. I'm here with you. Can't oh. get any better. Wow, this is great. This is going to be great. I, I just know it. It always is. Coach, let's look back to the St. Bonaventure game. That was incredible. The performance that the team put on in that one gets the win. What does that show you about this team? Just a lot of resiliency. You know, it's just... You know, our backs were against the wall. We had some injuries. We found out Jamiris Davis was going to be out that day. So we really didn't have much time to plan um, to counter that. And I, and then fighting a 14-point lead. And I just the kids, you know, refused to lose on s seniors' last home day game. And, you know, we just stepped up at the right time. What's going through your mind when St. Bonaventure hits their seventh consecutive three-pointer to start the game? I think I said something like, come on, instead of the shot even going in when it, when it happened. But... Have you ever seen anything like that? I think I turned to Chris and said, what are they shooting, like 80%? You know, like, I just kept thinking, like, it wasn't like they were uncontested. They were lightly contested, but I'm not, not uncontested. So I was just like, geez. I mean, and, and then we were knocking down shots. So it was just, it, it, it was a great game for the, the fans to be there for. The atmosphere in the Rose Hill gym, I'd say maybe there it was a third full. But, but it almost seemed like it was fully full yeah. at times with the football team and some of the other teams supporting. What was that atmosphere like? It was awesome. I mean, I turned around, I saw the football team, and then track and field and baseball were there. And we made sure we got them a bunch of pretzels. Next day, we said, thanks for being our great sixth man, just because their support was outstanding. Like I said, it just it felt like the, the kids' trip, the, you know, the field trip day. It just was so loud. You couldn't hear yourself think. And part of it was, you know, the, the kind of the pulse of the game was so fast, but also – um, the fact of, you know, couldn't hear yourself think because of the energy in the gym. So it was, it was a great atmosphere. They were definitely a six-man for us. Sam Clark, 20 and 17 in that game. Career high in rebounds and nearly in points as well. Her performance not only on Wednesday night was incredible, but all season. She's in the 1,200-900 club here at Fordham, one of the best of all time. But Wednesday night, what was clicking for her? You know, I laughed with Sam in the locker room. I said, Sam, that's like five games put together for you last year. You know, big girl stepping up. I mean, I kind of made a comment to her, just kidding her at halftime, just like, all right, baby, let's go. We're going inside. Let's get it done. And, uh, and I think, you know, in some ways I thought it might be harder on her because not having G being able to be there for her. In some ways it might be easier because she has a lane to herself. So I think in some ways that opens it up some things for her. Hannah, 234 three-pointers. Winding down her junior season, she's got the most threes ever in Florida women's basketball history already. She hit two in that game, and she hits the record, setting one with an and one, a four-point play. Now, we won't mention what St. Bonaventure yeah. did going back down with another four-point play, but to do that so young in her, in her career relative to the record, how impressive is that? It's unbelievable. And it's funny, you know, in, in kind of a melancholy way, I, I go back to when she was a senior in high school and we got the commitment from her, and my player who passed away from uh, Richmond, Ginny Doyle, was like, wow, you got a really good one. And Ginny was a prolific three-point shooter. So um, I think one three-point shooter kind of recognizes another three-point shooter. And, you know, if you'd said she was going to break the record and, and knowing it was such a long-standing record uh, in her junior year, I would have been like, well, that, that's an incredible feat. That's going to have to be a lot of threes. But, you know, and, and when you think about it, a lot of people just, you know, will say, well, gosh, all she can do she, she can do is shoot. Well, you know what? Nobody seems to stop it. She's setting a record in her third year. So what she does, she does very well. Asnate Fomina has had an up-and-down, I guess, career, still trying to get used to, to the game here this season. She's shown great strides, none more than, I'd say, against St. Bonaventure. 15 points off the bounce, getting to the hoop, not leaving her feet and committing any offensive fouls. What did you see from her in that game? She really stepped up as well. I thought, you know, I think of the movie Braveheart, freedom, you know, like she just felt like free, like she could attack the basket. And I thought her and Lauren did a great job of just creating some energy on the offensive end when they were in together because I think they pushed the ball a little more aggressively, even though we didn't want the pace to get too high because, you know, we just didn't have the numbers to, to kind of counter the pace of that game. That's why we kind of changed it up defensively a little bit to start the half. But I was so happy for Snop Day because, you know, she was out so long with, with the concussion and the fact that she was able to step up and, and have such a complete game was a, a great confidence booster. What about the progression of Lauren Holden? It was a, I don't know, identity crisis might be too harsh for the point guard position earlier in the season, but, but Lauren has really stepped in and been that, I guess, maybe the rock in the lineup recently. What have you seen from her progressing in her freshman year? You know, just more confidence. I go back to that Bonaventure game at Bonaventure, our first conf you know, second conference game, and I didn't start the second half because she just struggled so much. And then you, you you come full circle to, you know, the last regular season home game. And, and 
she's just playing with more confidence and more toughness. And, and, and she's, she was thrown into the fire. I mean, you're thrown as a point guard on an Atlantic 10 team. It's, it's not easy. And so I give her a lot of credit. And, you know, I, I, I stay on her. I'm very hard on her. But, you know, you know what? She takes the hits and she keeps on coming. And I, I, I just think she's only going to get better. Last two, Coach. Dayton coming up this weekend, the last regular season game, going to UD Arena. That's a tough place to play, without a doubt. What's the mindset coming out of the St. Bonaventure game, heading into that one on Sunday? I think the kids are playing with a high level of confidence. I mean, um, you know, Dayton's going to play for a 500 record. I mean, there's a lot of pride involved, especially when you're returning as from, from the Elite Eight. And they haven't been able to really hold court at home this year, which I'm sure is something that's really bothered them. So I'm, I'm certain they're going to want to finish out like we did at home on a high note. And my husband brought up to me, he goes, you know, one of the things is picking you to lose by 17 on Sunday. I'm like, okay, great. Well, you know what? They probably they picked us to lose against Bonaventure at home. But regardless of it, I think we need to develop with this lineup with G being out with a concussion. We need to get more consistent with this lineup. We were thrown into the fire for one one day, you know, not not prepared for it. And so now that we have a couple of days of practice in the Dayton game, we need to kind of develop some type of rotation getting into the conference tournament with this with this lineup. 11-4 and four at the Rose Hill Gym this year. Struggles on the road after, of course, the Dayton game. It's neutral at the Richmond Coliseum for the A-10 tournament. Locked into the sixth seed, 7 o'clock game, Thursday night. What is the key just in general? You can take into the Dayton game, too, because it's away from here, to, to getting better on the road and, and playing better away from Fordham University. It's the third season. So you just have to put the first two seasons, the out-of-conference season, and the, and the Atlantic 10 regular season, you have to put them behind you. And you have to say, all right, everything, we're, we're zero, zero right now. So let's take all the things we've learned from those 29 games and take the best out of them and leave it on the court for 40 minutes. Coach, thanks so much. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it.